Heat from the sun. It keeps us warm. It makes trees grow, giving us food. And it pretty much keeps everything alive and happy. But what happens to all that bright white energy after it reaches us here on Earth? For me, they give you vitamin, vitamin D, and for the tree, they help it stay alive. When they hit the ozone layer, part of it gets absorbed and part of it goes up into space. It depends what's on the ground. Sometimes it reflects up into the air, and if you're standing on top, it might reflect onto you. But if it doesn't reflect, it just stays on the ground and it doesn't go anywhere. In a way, they're all right. Some of the sun's hot rays are absorbed, warming up the planet. But a lot bounce back out into space. And on their way out, sometimes they get stuck. That's because they bump into tiny little particles floating in the atmosphere called greenhouse gases. They include carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide. It's normal for greenhouse gases to be up there in the atmosphere doing that. They're a natural part of Earth's climate system. In fact, without them, our planet's average temperature would drop to minus 18 degrees, meaning all the water on Earth would completely freeze over. So in many ways, greenhouse gases are great. You can think of them as being like blankets on a cold night. They trap more heat in to keep us warm. But what happens if we put on too many? Things start to get hot. And the same thing could happen with our planet. Unfortunately, our main energy sources, like coal and petrol, release extra greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. So by generating energy like that, it's kind of like we're putting more blankets on the planet. In fact, scientists say, thanks mostly to humans, greenhouse gases have risen to their highest level in 800,000 years. And that could cause some big problems. Climate scientists say it'll warm up the planet, which will melt ice, causing sea levels to rise, and that will threaten people living close to the water, and some animals will suffer too. More greenhouse gases could also cause our intricately balanced climate to change, meaning more extreme weather in the future. Scientists say if we don't start to bring greenhouse gases down to natural levels, the damage will be severe and irreversible. So they're calling on the world's governments to find ways to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Compared to the levels in the year 2000, the Australian government is trying to cut greenhouse gases by 5% within six years. That's going to be pretty hard, so they'll be giving big businesses money to try to invent new ways to tackle the problem. And they're building a green army of young people to plant more trees, because trees actually drink in one of the gases, carbon dioxide. But everyone needs to chip in. And that's not just other countries, it's also you and me. The Australian Youth Climate Coalition's three top tips for reducing your greenhouse gas emissions are one, to ride your bike to school, two, to buy less stuff, and three, to talk to your parents about climate change. Given scientists want us to completely stop using energy sources like coal and petrol by the year 2100, it might be time to get a roll on.